The Division 2. The game was released in March 2019 and is losing player base and viewers on Twitch. And we will just need to talk why The Division 1 was such a great success and the game is still so very alive on Twitch and what The Division 2 needs to match that success. Tom Clancy's The Division. The game was released on the 8th of March in 2016. The reveal looked amazing and offered stuff that would in hindsight never be in the game. On release the game was a broken mess filled with bugs, no endgame content, and an unbalanced PvP scene. But the game did have something, and the developers started working on improving the game, adding more game modes, and just offering a great experience. Alright, let's get the elephant out of the room immediately. The Division 2 is losing player base, and fast. The game is still streamed on Twitch by fans, but it is not getting the viewership it deserves. The player base is not happy on how Massive Entertainment and Ubisoft are handling this game. Small content updates, a promise for raids, and missing a lot of stuff that made the first division great. To make sure we know how to fix the game, we first need to look at what made the first game so great. So go back with me in time, and let's watch some footage and get some commentary on the Division 1. Survival is by far the best game mode in The Division 1 in my opinion. It was the second paid DLC in the game and introduced in patch 1.5. It was harder than regular content and could easily take up some time to finish. It had a PvP and a PvE mode. The thought behind the game mode was to get the player on edge, offer gameplay that required everybody to start on the same level playing field. The goal was to go around fighting the cold by looting clothes to stay warm, to play smart with your consumables and to start looting and crafting better gear. With this better gear, you were able to fight bigger and better enemies and clear out landmarks. After you did all this, you had to craft a contamination filter to be able to go into the dark zone, an area filled with roaming NPCs and elite enemies. In there, the same rules applied. Play smart and watch out that you don't use all your consumables at once. Every minute would count as this disease would kill you over time if you didn't take your meds. Next up, you need to get your antiviral and build a flare gun to extract. Now the problem with extracting was the following. Everyone in the dark zone could see you extract, and so could the strongest, hardest NPC in the game. The Hunter. Now these guys did a ton of damage could heal themselves and could one-shot you with a melee attack. If that isn't hard enough, there's the PvP mode, where not only all the NPCs want to kill you, but also the players want to see you face down on the floor. Survival was a game mode that would make players rage after dying after one hour in the game. Would you mistrust everyone? Would you love everyone? Would you play together with everyone? Everything could happen in survival and the game mode required your full attention. The rumor was that Division 2 would get a survival mode, but on State of the Game this got debunked, and we were informed that no survival would be implemented. The player base was not happy to say the least. A lot of people only played survival in the Division 1 because it was such a unique experience offering great replayability. Instead, the developers decided to release a hardcore mode, asking players to give up a character slot instead of it being an instance game mode like survival. Offering the campaign story missions would permit that and losing all your stuff. People like it, but it's not survival as we were used to. The first point Ubisoft and Massive could do is take the hardcore mode up to another level. Add the use of consumables like water, food and the heat. Make the map for all players instead of a solo map and have about 30 to 40 players on the same map. Give them the option to choose for PvE or PvP in hardcore mode. This would make it even more intense and would really help with the content creators. Permadeath single player just doesn't sound too exciting and it's not that hard if you play it smart. For me, there is no real incentive to play it as it's just another character to level up and finish the campaign, but this time, if I die, I have to start all over again. 
I think it's time we talk about the underground. The first paid DLC added in patch 1.3, and PvE only. It offered a four-man squad to explore the tunnel network underneath Manhattan. The game mode that offered procedurally generated dungeons that felt different every time you played it, adding different NPC types through every run, having to fight off hunters that could randomly spawn in during a run, and offering some great rewards. It was the way to gear up fast after dinging level 30. Players could set multiple different modifiers on an underground operation to make the run more difficult, but on the other side, it would give them better rewards. You could have a breeze playing through it when you had a good squad, but it could take a long time and a lot of wipes if you had a bad squad with you. The hunters, especially in the beginning, could make your underground run really hard and could cause a big wipe if you would run into them. Besides all of this, it added some more fun elements like alarm zones, active gas pipes, slowing players down, electrical currents, steam filled rooms, jamming devices, blinding traps. The Division 2 does not offer game modes like this yet. I don't want them to copy and paste the idea completely, but I would love something like it. Offer players another way to get loot instead of running the same missions over and over again. The dungeon crawler is known to be a game type people love to do. Quick and smooth runs, offer people some modifiers to change the gameplay up a little, and offer a few new levels of difficulty for them. Okay, both games have PvP modes, so I won't take too much time on this. PvP balance has always been an issue in the division. Gear was designed for PvE and would be overpowered in PvP. This resulted in them bringing out gear for PvE, downscaling it for PvP, and messing it up for the PvE aspect of the game. Massive's answer was normalized gear in PvP modes. This was a great move, and only applicable in the PvP game modes, nowhere else in the game. This way, no one was at an advantage in the PvP game modes, but having special perks on your gear would still work in PvP and still required you to grind the gear to actually be competitive in the game modes. They adapted this in the Division 2, but I feel that the gear offered in the Division 2 doesn't have the same impact as some of the Division 1's gear sets. My advice here would be, more gear is not always better. Offer less brand sets and gear sets, but with more exclusive perks on them. Make the different brand sets and gear sets feel different from each other. I feel that at the moment it doesn't really matter what I run because it all feels the same. Now let's talk about what made The Division the most unique looter shooter in its genre. The Dark Zone. The original endgame that The Division featured, and it offered the best loot in the game, offering infinite replayability in its lawless piece of the map. You trusted no one in there, grinding NPCs for the best rewards and picking up Division tech. One of the most needed mats for crafting in endgame. The Dark Zone was a great area which had risk versus reward written all over it. You as a player needed to venture deep into the PvEVP area, not being able to run back to the safe room or DZ checkpoint to make it out alive. And how about all of that loot? Yeah, you need to extract that good stuff, so call in the chopper and wait a couple of minutes before it arrives, trying to fight off all the NPCs that got alerted. It's a good thing that all the players in the Dark Zone aren't alerted of an extraction. Oh wait, they are. Everyone on the map knew who was extracting and where, and the PvP-minded players would hunt you down and steal your precious loot. But what if you were the one that went rogue on other players? I mean, they do the same to you. So time to take revenge. Nothing felt more amazing than being in a squad and going on a manhunt just to be hunted down by the entire server for the XP reward they get, creating choke points and mowing them down. A good group with proper builds who keep an entire server at bay while trying to destroy everything in their path. Now I have never been a great PvP player, but the Dark Zone was one of my favorite spots in the Division. A lot of people didn't like the rogue system, the backstabbing, the unfair fights and the tension of being not being able to trust anyone in that area. But the Dark Zone was designed to be just that. Unfair, backstabbing, intense and filled with griefers. Now looking at the Dark Zone in the Division 2, I don't feel like it's the same thing. 
the turrets protecting against spawn camping, the normalization of the dark zone and the smaller area make it more of a PvE zone with some PvP elements in there. Normalization ruined the griefing and made it a less tense area to be in. You don't need a well put together min-maxed build anymore to kill other players. The cover based shooting that Massive has put so much effort in just slows down the gameplay. Again, how do you fix this? Make the dark zone one big area again. And if you are afraid of not being able to balance PvE and PvP, make specific PvE and PvP gear available. PvE gear only drops in the PvE zones and PvP gear only drops in the dark zone. Just make sure to create a specific talent slash stat that's not useful at the other side of the game. For example, X percentage of damage to player armor and put more armor on the PvP gear. Now, I know this is just an example and I am no developer by any means and I don't know how to design a game, but I feel that the Dark Zone has lost its glory that it had in the Division 1 and because of this, you were always in a full Dark Zone server when you boot up the Division 1. It's time to talk about the end game of the Division 1. The Incursions. Now, I don't have any footage on the Incursions themselves, but what I can tell you that these things were hard especially the first time around, offering more tactical gameplay than just point and shoot at the enemy. Incursions are a type of mission in Tom Clancy's The Division, exclusively to the end game and only available after the agent completes the General Assembly mission and reaches level 30. Incursions take place after the events of the main story, after the main enemy factions were splintered and weakened by the efforts of the Joint Task Force and the Strategic Homeland Division. They were considered amongst the most difficult player versus environment content in the game, similar in difficulty and impact to endgame as raids in other games. Incursions could be completed at different difficulty levels for top level rewards, including high end guaranteed exotics and gear set pieces for gear, as well as exclusive cosmetics to each encounter and difficulty level. Since update 1.4, they could be completed repeatedly instead of once a week for rewards and specific incursions would now guarantee rewards for specific gear slots. Previously, each incursion guaranteed rewards from a specific gear set. They offered four different incursions named Falcon Lost, Clear Sky, Dragon's Nest and Stolen Signal. Although the Division 2 has strongholds in the raid, they just don't feel the same like the incursions do. The strongholds feel like multiple missions copy and pasted behind one another and did not offer as much thought as the incursions did. For me, it felt like clearing mobs, killing the boss, rinse and repeat. Although they are larger than the incursions, they can be cleared a lot faster. The raid, however, is awesome. It offers a lot of fun mechanics and was a real challenge when it came out. I remember doing my first raid and I was a bit tipsy and pissing off a buddy of mine that ran it a couple of times already. The problem with the raid is, there's only one. It got replayed so many times that people are speedrunning them and someone I know actually cleared it under 8 minutes. Ubisoft and Massive will need to start pumping out more endgame content to keep the player base busy. Because creating builds that in my opinion feel very much alike is not the endgame you want. If Massive can bring out more stuff like the raid, the player base would be more happy and less bored with the game, resulting in more viewership on streaming platforms and a larger active player base. Last but not least, the world. Okay, let me be honest with you guys. I don't like the Division 2 setting. The Division 1's world felt like a really apocalyptic. The cold grey weather just worked with the story of the green poison. Everywhere you looked was stuff on the ground, graffiti on the walls, body bags and just despair. Even the civilian NPCs were so well done, coughing and dying on the streets, fighting over loot, looting everything they see and asking you for help. I know that Ubisoft Massive downgraded the graphics a lot, but still, the game looked amazing when I booted it up the first time. Now the Division 2 has a beautiful map and I love the verticality in the game. It offers so much more than the Division 1 offered in the world. But the sunny look doesn't really do it for me. Everything is so bright and saturated. It feels like I'm not in an apocalyptic world but just in an abandoned city. The NPCs just don't do it for me. Story wise? Wait, I don't even know where the story is in the Division 2. I hated some of the factions of the Division 1 and I knew what they were about. 
In The Division 2, I just don't get enough backstory to actually care about them. The Division 1 had a large open ending in its story, and they really missed the mark with not continuing the story they had. But back to the world. Even though it has more events in it, more to do, it just doesn't feel alive to me. It just feels like an abandoned city, and that's not what it should feel like. I need to have the feeling that I'm fighting for something, and now I just feel like I need to shoot some NPCs for the new loot. Talking about the loot, I love that they shower you with loot, but this is just too much loot. 99% of the loot that drops gets deconstructed or sold to a vendor but because it doesn't offer an upgrade. I don't feel like I have to work for actual loot anymore. I loved how they handled loot in Division 1. It was a lot, but it was reasonably distributed over the content. Now I feel like I get loot for crossing the street. This makes for more time going through your backpack and going through stuff you don't need or don't even offer upgrades. I know a looter requires grinding and this is a way of time gating gameplay, but I'd rather have a little less loot. Alright, if you're still here, you have reached the end of the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. If you agree with me, please leave a comment. If you disagree with me, please leave a comment. I am more than happy to read up on all the comments and react to them. I do stream on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday around 8 p.m. Central European time. So make sure to drop by there and say hello. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.